YouTube Brown Phillips. We have a box, we're gonna open it right now. It's gonna be super exciting. I'm proud to stop the nose diving on the first flight. Here we go. So there's some damage here, you may notice. And so I'm a little bit nervous. Whenever I get a box that's got damage like this, I think, ew, that could be bad. Oh my goodness, it's a PA18, also known as a Sport Cub. 1.3 meter, amazing. And you're like, how can a 1.3 meter fit in this box? I'll what? tell you how, because it's cut in half. <laughs> the, I mean, the inside box isn't damaged at all. That box is perfect, yeah. yeah. Look at it. Not Every side is gorgeous. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why we do unboxings. Oh yeah, this has lights. Look, lights, amazing. Yeah. They're squishy tires. I hope they're not as ugly as the X-Fly ones because those ones were really ugly. Yeah. But I think these ones are better. So let's open this up and check it out. This is the ready to fly option. They also have a plug and play version, which I believe either one comes with reflex, but don't hold me to it. Make sure you read the specs. Yeah, I think that's correct. But this yeah. one says reflex V2, which means that even though it's flying on the pro protocol that comes with the transmitter, it is definitely going to come with reflex as well. So that's pretty cool. That is a really small box. That is a super small really box. Surprised. It is super, super small. Hey, hold on. I don't want to cover up those flowers that some wonderful person got for their wonderful camera crew. <laughs> and you're like, wow, that is the worst, smallest flowers ever. Well, they weren't that small. They were, <laughs> they died <laughs> really quick. It was like, oh my goodness. It didn't even last like a half a day. No. Uh, so that's why you don't buy flowers, people. Well, maybe not where you buy flowers. <laughs> We have a manual here. It's amazing. We're going to read that and study it for all safety precautions. Oh, this is just the reflex stuff. Hey, you yes. over here. Look, <laughs> wow, that is amazing. That thing is light. Feel how light that is. Wow. It's like nothing. It's like, That's... okay, maybe it's something, but still <laughs> this has an LED here, forward facing. It's got a nav light, feels nice and stiff, but also a little bit forgiving. You can see it's got a little bit of twist if I really rail on it. And you can see there's some reinforcement here. You can always tell where the reinforcement is on these models because you can see these weird holes like that, mm -hmm. okay? And then this is plastic reinforced at the connection points, which is really good unless you break it there and then it's kind of hard to fix. And inboard flaps, outboard ailerons, very long. Beautiful little vortex generators, loving it. Okay, cool, so we're gonna keep going. Oh, and then ball link servo linkages. Yep. So that's nice. It's kind of the It's kind of the new thing, now. guys. Yeah. I got to say, I, I mean, it's definitely a net victory for the RC hobby, unless you have one that rips out, <clears throat> and then it's bad. Okay, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that might be, that one might be fiberglass. Fiberglass? Eh, it might be carbon fiber. It's a, you can tell by the twang. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, horizontal stabilizer and elevator. This is where you wanna work this a little bit. It is a pinch hinge. And some of you guys are probably like, uh, pinch hinge, I won't ever buy a plane with a pinch hinge. So yes, you will. Not buying planes? You can imagine what it'd be like if they did though. <laughs> oh wow, it's like another wing with a nav light. And guys, I just gotta point this out. This looks so gorgeous. These are day bright LEDs, I can tell from the shape. And look how nice that is. They've got this masked off. So when they jig this paint, they paint it. And then this is a pinstripe that's a decal, beautiful. And by the way, I hate putting decals on when they're big like that. And so FMS has done a really nice job of getting that done. Of course, plastic reinforced on the wing connection point feels nice and sturdy, which is good. So we'll put that over there. Obviously 1300 millimeters is not a small plane. It's not a huge plane. It's a perfect size. I love the 1300 millimeter size. I actually like it. I like 1200 millimeters too. <coughs> I like 1100 millimeters. I like all the sizes, but that is amazing. Oh, it literally is cut in half. I would, would you, I here, thought you hold were, this. I thought you were just joking. being a, I thought you were just being jerk, a weirdo. Like normal? Yeah. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I knew it was broken half. This is, this is actually really feels nice though. It does. It really does. I mean, this I carbon really fiber, like this gives you an idea of what you're getting. Um, see that foam insert? They have plastic that has a nut zert pressed into it, and then a large piece of plastic that's reinforced probably down to this. And I mean, this thing is that's really sturdy. sturdy. So that's pretty cool, but not so sturdy that it feels like it's gonna break. 
because it's got a little bit of wiggle to it, okay? A little bit, not a lot, a little. Mm -hmm. A little is good for new pilots because, you know, you don't want the thing to break the first time you bump it when you're walking by, right. which you will. I'm just saying. Hmm, that looks a little bit sus. Like it was supposed to be a... Let's unwrap my balls. Oh, Ooh, another well, empty. It is nothing, Never mind. That was super disappointing. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have some wing spars here, or wait, not wing spars. What are these things called? These aren't wing spars. What am I saying? No, wing struts. Wing struts. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> some screaming in the background. That's always normal around here. Okay. We have a prop in here. Let's pull the prop out. Looks like a nice prop. Blunt tips, so it's going to be noisy. As you can see, this is an 11.7. Very sharp, actually. Be careful with that. It's like really sharp. Feel it. Isn't that oh, crazy? It is, yeah. It's like a knife. And then you can see it's got that octagonal shape here. So it'll key on. And uh, the radio is down here, the transmitter. So I'm going to actually cut this side now. But, ooh, I got to get the nuts and bolt sack out. Okay. This is a Reflex V2 upgrade cable. Let's put that where it needs to go yep. because we never use them. Nope. Never have. We have like seven or eight of them. Okay. Lots of screws. Lots of lot. joiners. Well, that's because this is a float capable plane. Oh. So as a result, now what is this? What is that? Oh, we've got stick ends, like tips. Gimbals? And then. Oh, they're pink. Yeah, they're pink, but also they're sharp, which is nice. Yeah. Okay. So we'll look at that in a little bit. Uh, it looks like a bind plug and then a bunch of stuff for the wings and all that. And remember, this thing bolts together. I think everything is bolted together. There's no glue from what I can tell. Um, and I hope I'm not speaking too soon because it's possible there might be glue. Obviously, we're gonna cut this thing out right now. Whoops. There it is, there it is, guys. Okay, cool, yeah, I had to do that just to get the nose cone out. Okay, so there's the nose cone adapter. Oh, it looked like it was broken, it made me really oh. nervous. Wow, that's three pieces, come on, man. Oh. Why is it three pieces? That was weird. That is bizarre, look at this. You've got just the tip. If you want to just, just the tip there, and then that goes over this, and then that tip goes onto this assembly, which is just that the is most bizarre strange. and super complex spinner mechanism I've ever seen. In fact, it's kind of like, I'm not really a big fan of that, but that's fine. It is what it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift up the fuse, which is the other half of the fuse, and it comes right out with a beautiful Plastic leading edge cowl. Obviously you've got an opening here to receive the other half. And then there's gonna be screws that go through to a plastic receiver on this half. And then on this half, plastic receiver is mounted on the inside. Show them the inside. Mm -hmm. So the plastic will go against the plastic. The nuts are, will receive the screws. So you actually have a good contact point. And this thing feels super robust. Now, I must say, in terms of amazing ideas the RC airplane manufacturers could take. Look at all these screw holes. That's yeah. because of the different float versus landing gear positions. If you're gonna make a plane that's crashable and repairable, talk about a smart idea. I mean, really. True. You could just buy the front half of the fuse. Yeah. But there again, what we found in our hobby experience is that we almost always fix stuff. And uh, even though we work with all these brands and we could, we could probably get the parts and things and not have to pay for them and stuff, we don't, we just fix them. And why do we do that? Because we've never found it to make sense to order a lot of parts unless you just really destroy one. And then you gotta order parts. But I can say this from personal experience. Most of the time, you can fix the planes, most. Sometimes you gotta buy a fan, sometimes you gotta buy you know, like an EDF fan or you got to buy prop things like that but generally speaking if the body gets broke you can usually fix them yeah um that's not always true and i understand some of you guys are a little bit more picky about having them just so when you're done repairing them so i get that i don't mean to disparage anybody else's ideas of what's necessary but but sometimes you look at something and it seems really bad yeah and sometimes like once you start like it's... the su-27 that we crashed the other day yeah okay power cable and super secret smuggled 2200 million predator 25C 3S nice. with an so XT60. This is totally, totally ready. This is to like fly. legit ready well, to fly. Well, I mean, we're going to need some it's, battery. It's going to need some, some user assembly well, required. Yeah. But you don't have to provide a lipo. What is this? That would be a charger. That would be a charger. Okay, so we're going to charge this right now. 
We should have started on the bottom and worked our way around. Wow. Well, you know why? Because then we could have been charging the battery. But we're gonna charge the battery anyway. Know this, and it's it's a little windy while you're plugging that in. Oh, you want to show them how much it blows outside? It okay, totally blows. I get it. Okay, so hey, don't forget to show them how to charge this thing. Okay. Now, first things first. Yes, you can charge this dumb battery on a smart charger. There's no problem. You just have to have the correct adapter and you have to have the bounce lead. Okay. All right. So plug this in here. Oh man, that is super low quality, but it'll get the job done if you don't have one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have millions of these like weird random chargers. This one's actually one that I've seen for years. Yeah. And what you do is you plug in your balance lead and then it goes ahead and balances and charges through the balance lead, okay? So it goes to a red and it goes to a red, okay? And then when they're done, it'll go to green. And all it does is it charges one cell at a time and that's it. That's all it does. So it monitors for 4.2 volts and when it gets there, it stops. So it's very simple. As opposed to the smart charger that uses all sorts of other technology. And ultimately you dumb it down to, it's doing that. It's just doing it on a chip that's on board on the battery instead of on the charger itself. Okay, so I'm gonna open that up by rotating. And then you've got the FlySky transmitter. And yes, that's why they sent those pink sticks, which is pretty cool. Of course, this thing is like a lock nut. You can see I'm screwing that in. I have no clue why they didn't just put those on. They must have made it just enough, just short enough that it could fit. That is very <laughs> that is bizarre. Crazy. Okay, so this is the provided radio. It actually feels like a good size radio. It's very light. You can tell it's definitely not gonna be like a super high hobby grade. You're not gonna be using this for a lot of other planes. And the reason you won't is because you're gonna be following along and doing AR620s and things like that, but it does have nice sticks. Yeah. That it is does, very nice. Actually. And the spring is, uh, it's, it's okay. It's not terrible. It's not great. You can see how it's got a little bit of movement to it. That's not a big problem. I can definitely like the size though. And it's thinner. That is helpful if you have a kid with small mm -hmm. hands. Small hands, you can get around a smaller, thinner transmitter, but it's got a nice robust handle. I like that a lot. I don't know if that's like a trainer, trainer port. Okay, and then it looks like this needs four double A's. I'm guessing it won't come with those, but it'll come with everything else. But it's also not so small. Some of those little tiny like Batman controllers yep. in your hands are, are really small. So it's a good yeah, it's middle good size. Adult your... hands, but then it'll also work for kids. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So, you're doing it so that was smart. Then. And then this says bind key right here. So this bind key, you've got a power. And uh, this is the FS14X. You can reverse whatever channels you need. So just be real careful with that. Race? What's the light? High, mid, low. Hmm. I'm not sure what all that does. There's three switches and two switches. All right, so then this was in the other bag and this looks like some sort of a, like a key. Oh. And then that is a bind plug. So I'm not sure what that does, but either way, they say age is 15 plus on there. I'm not really sure if that holds true necessarily. Obviously, if you're flying radio controlled airplanes, there's some rules, knowbeforeyoufly.com if you wanna check it out. That's definitely up to you guys. I am not a lawyer. I don't give legal advice. So all I'm gonna say is this thing is awesome and I'm excited for it. And yes, those look better than the X-Fly version because they are smaller hubs oh. and nice, wow, really good, really robust, nice. true yeah. pneumatic tires. Cool. And yes, the pneumatic tires do have a filling, filling tube here. And so I'm not sure exactly. I think it's just a regular filling port. So like if you wanna fill these, you have to pull this out and then you can just fill them up with like a little pump. But did they include a pump? I don't see a pump. I do like the way this landing gear looks. It looks like it's gonna splay nicely, mm -hmm. but it's all one big piece. So it's very simplistic. The only thing I don't like about the simplicity is that it's going to allow it to then splay out and get sprung in that position. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, definitely has a lot of bounce to it. Okay, cool. So we're gonna take a second, clean up, and get right back to the build. Stay tuned. All right, so we got a two millimeter tool like this, uh, driver in this case, and then I did find this air filler, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you wanna take air out or you wanna add air to the tires, you can do that, which is really cool. What I found works really nice is I will open up, I will open up the lid, okay? And you can see inside of here, there's your FlySky receiver, really inexpensive choice. And then I would just find a place that makes sense 
like this is thick enough, I can get away with this, so I'm just gonna slide that in. I'm just gonna literally poke it in, and that way I know where it is. Oh no, I protruded through the window, whoops. That was not what I meant to do, but at the same time, that is actually kind of the concept. See, now it's in there, yep. and we don't have to search for it. Yeah. But it's not gonna fall out, and by the way, that little hole, super annoying that I did that, but at the same yeah, time, dude, you'll never notice. Funny. Okay, and I have done that on my beaver, mm -hmm. <laughs> and other planes. Yeah, to anything have, we switch over to. Any, anytime we put pneumatic tires, I always put the filling tool apparatus in the plane because <laughs> otherwise you're never gonna find that thing. Nope. Okay, continuing on. All right, so two millimeters and they're all the same size screws, so it should make it really easy to build. Um, they suggested feeding this through, getting the fuse built first. So I guess in this case, we'll go ahead and build it right. Now, the other thing is keep in mind, if you want to build this plane and take it apart each time you take it in your car, wherever you're going, this is only a 1300 millimeter plane. It's not huge, but that being said, people with smaller cars are going to have a harder time with trans transportation. Okay. So these are the long leads, elevator, rudder. Make sure that you actually plug in your elevator or it may not work. Just saying. Things happen sometimes, guys. So you see down there how there's an opening? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna pass that wire down and there's no other way to really get to it. And so some of you guys are gonna say, why don't you get a fish, a fish tape and bring it through and all and I'm not gonna do anything that sophisticated. We're just gonna struggle through. I'm just gonna struggle through and do lots of grunting as I force it through the tight hole. Okay. okay? So you guys uh, see what I'm doing here? It's pretty complicated and super hard. Would you hold that there? The bottom? Yep, yep. thank you. Hey, just hold still, hold still. See, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed those in and then I'm gonna pass it in. And then what I'll do is I'll take the fuse and I will fling it until the wires go forward. Now hold still, mm -hmm. hold still. Okay, now that's together. Very good fit, very super easy. Now, before I forget, I'm gonna totally and seriously get this screwed together. Yes. I'm just gonna put my instruction manual here. I don't actually need to look at it too much. And then I'm gonna slide that out of the way so we can get in here and really get into it. So super easy, grab the screw, super easy stuff. Put it on the end of the, your, your driver and then try to get this lined up. You may need to push for me if you can push the tail hard. If you get a second set of hands, it might make it easier to line this up. Nope, let go. I want to show the people what I'm struggling with. Okay. Show them what I'm struggling with. Do you see that? Yes. Misaligned, pretty bad, okay? So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to really kind of pull this tail down. So like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a lever action here and I'm gonna pull up like that, okay? Can I have you help me with that Can while I do this? Pull up? Yep, I'm pushing hard against the nose. You're gonna push it toward me. You gotta push it toward me like this, then pull up. Okay, see if I can get that angle. It's just hard to get it started, guys. Sorry for the focus, people. Okay, ooh, I feel like it's going, I feel like it's going. Okay, got the first one. Okay. It's definitely Biden, you can let go now. Okay. Now that we're there. Sorry. Okay, so that one's in. So I don't know if you guys could tell what we were doing, but what we were doing is we were pushing this tail up. And you guys see that gap there? Mm -hmm. That's what you're trying to create. And that's gonna allow you to align your two keyholes. Then you can come back over and kind of do the same, except it should be easier on the second side because now you can just press down, okay? So one side or the other is gonna be awkward. This side, as you can see, is closer. And then as I press, if you wanna give them a shot right down the, the pipe there, I'm gonna push hard on this and you see how it lines up as I push down, Yeah. okay? So that's all I'm gonna do. So sometimes you can get lucky and do that. So you just press really hard and it gets the first couple of teeth in there and then you're golden, okay? And as you can see, my disgusting, gruesome nail is almost gone. Whew, thank God, that thing was so nasty. But the problem is it's on camera, so people are gonna comment on it forever. Yes, that's right. Look at this, amazing. You should sound better, Brian. It looks like you filmed this in 2022. It's 2028. Is it better yet? Yes, it is better yet. In 2028. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that done, we have these two wires, and you're like, how are you gonna get those wires out? It's gonna be so hard. Watch this. Just using some science, and if I crash it into the wall, it's gonna be hilarious <laughs> to make for really good YouTube. Okay, so as you can see, look, 
Where are those wires? There, right? Hold. <laughs> Is that helpful when I move it, it like that? It is super helpful, right there. Okay, so now that we have those wires, so now everybody that's like, yeah, you should have used the fish tape, Brian. You could use the fish tape if you wanna work harder, or you could just get your forceps out from surgery earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can just grab these, grab these and firmly insert them. Okay, one and dose. Here we go. So now that we have those two, I don't know which port they plug into, but I would imagine it plugs into one of these. Looks like we have flaps. Why are there three flap connections? That is very weird. What the heck? S bus, PPM, reverse, elevator. Oh, they go into the reflex? Ugh, really? Yeah. No, oh, no, yes. they go into these. They go into these. Wait, what? These, right? Look, there's three. What the heck are those? This says is. They go into the reflex. Yeah, I know they go into the reflex. Okay. That's, I agree with you, but what I'm trying to say is how do I tell which one's which? Oh. Because look, there's, there's like, oh, they go right there. If you show them what I'm talking about, it says elevator Ooh. next to the ailerons. You see that? Yeah, leave that light on because I can't see you otherwise. Okay. Okay, so the brown is gonna go toward the nose of the plane in this event. So I'm just gonna hold that uh, receiver out of the way. And gosh, I am having a hard time reaching, so I need to move stuff like bad. And every time I seem to move it, it gets worse and worse. Okay, go to my right side there, camera crew. Okay. I think you'll be able to see. So this is what I need to do. This has to go in there next to the ailerons, which is the second port from the left. And I need the brown facing me. Oh, that's not too bad. That was pretty good. I got it, no big deal. And then I'm just gonna make sure that that actually gets plugged in, you know, because elevators are helpful unless your name's Ian. And then, you know, like on a well-adjusted plane, elevators are not necessary. Mm, he's crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> Ian gets a lot of shelf life out he of this does. channel. He really he thinks, has. It's like, Brian, oh, it's a well-adjusted sailplane, doesn't need an elevator. Yeah. <laughs> Which he's, really, really good pilot. So I shouldn't make fun of that hilarious comment he made, but still it is hilarious because we all need elevators. Everybody needs a lift from time to time. That's true. Even airplanes. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're all plugged in. It's amazing. I mean, we do need some wings though. Yes. You do need a horizontal stabilizer. Yes. Right. Okay. I think you probably need both would be good. Horizontal stabilizer and oh my goodness. Look at this. There is a pushy button thingy. Wait, a push. Oh. Watch this. Boop. Wow. That's amazing. That's really nice. They've really done a good job on this plane. This is pretty cool stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this through. One goes one side, one goes the other. But Brian, how do you tell which side's which? I uh, just, yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure until I screw it up. Just kidding guys, there's a linkage um, or there's this ball joint thingy down here and that's gonna be here. I just can't tell when it's snapped. Right, that's what I was Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's in. Did you feel that? I do think it's ironic that they do that much effort for a quick release on the horizontal stabilizer. Right. Like why not on the wings? A couple screws in. Yeah. A real screw. So anyway, whatever, it is what it is. I'm still happy they've got them. Okay, so we got two wings, we got landing gear. Let's put the landing gear in. I'm feeling the landing gear next. Okay. Okay. I'm sure the instructions probably tell you how to do these things. They do. But you know, it's like, whatever. Seems like a lot of work to read. Yeah, it is. And plus you have to know those words and how to piece those letters together into words. Okay, so this is gonna go on here and this is gonna go onto there. And then the other two are gonna go in the middle through this, right? I don't know, you didn't read the directions. Are you saying I need to read the directions? Why would I need to read the directions when I built hundreds of planes? I See need that? to read the directions. Oh, okay. I've only watched you build hundreds of planes. That's true, that's true. So I'm gonna hook that. See, I figured it out. That's good stuff, that's good stuff. Smart. Thank you, it's so nice. Okay, I'm gonna put this around here. 
and then I'm going to go right here, and then I'm going to screw that down. But it's easier to do it in this order, I believe. And then I can put this and this over the top of these. That's kind of weird. You only have four of those. Why do we only have four? Because those are longer. No, I'm just saying like these are longer. Look. But. But right here, look. These ones are longer. They're different. They're different. See? These are different. They're going to go right here. So I don't, did they short us? What? I can't tell. See, that's where that goes, 100% for sure. Yeah, okay. But then these 100% for sure go there. It's not like you can put them in the wrong spot. Can I look at the directions? Well, I mean, you can, but I'd rather screw this in first and then we'll look because I know that one goes there. Okay. So why don't we do that? We're just going to get these screws going while the camera crew, why don't we show them how we're doing the screws and then you can uh, pan over to the instruction manual and show okay. the people what we're talking about. So I'm just starting one screw just to kind of get it in place. And then this one here, you can see how there is kind of like a thinner opening and then this thicker opening that's going to pull down the main landing gear. Oh, shoot. Cam crew, I'm gonna need your help holding this steady with one hand if you can. Hold on, let me focus. And then okay. Just, okay, all right, thank you. So that goes into there. And you could probably do this, you know, with uh, the gear first, or you could put in the springs first. I just figured it'd be a pain to put those springs on if they were all assembled first. And I, I could be wrong though. Mm, I think you're probably. I think I, I'm, I think you're I'm probably right. That. Really? Especially if you have another set of hands. The springs can sometimes be a little bit. Okay. Yeah, a little much. Yeah. So yeah, I don't understand why. I almost feel like we got shorted on that. In the picture. Okay. There's only. You can, you can just, yeah, show them. I'm just tightening screws. Okay, there's two, four. But I mean, don't you agree that the these springs? are the correct ones here? They yes. definitely go there. Yeah, I mean, they aren't. But then where there. are these? Oh, you know what they are? Duh, I feel like such a moron. Look. Oh. That is super cool. Oh, that is a good idea. I'm loving okay. it. That's really neat. Okay. But it's just different. So. I am going to grab some screws and we're going to go, we're just going to Are we going to put those on before the wings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know how else you would do it, really, to be honest. Because you have to get this on first, I think. I'm sure the instructions show totally different and more intelligent way to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, we'll do it in my way. Sounds good. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that's now tight. Now there's gonna be a lot of screws on this, so I think what we'll probably do is we might, I don't know, should we like pause, pause. while we're screwing yeah, this? Or they don't should have we? To watch us screw I don't the know, time. I think they might enjoy it. Let's just, let's dip the tip in some Dawn dish detergent because they are kind of like not going very tight. smooth. Yeah, I got a little bit. Yeah, it's actually kind of. Ah! We're gonna get another one okay. without Dawn dish detergent. And guys, if you haven't ever done this, it does really work nicely. I usually don't have to do it, but if you put a little Dawn dish detergent or you can take a bar soap and you can put a little bit and you'll actually lubricate the threads nicely. So if you're having trouble getting those things to start or to go all the way in, you can do that. Now, I'm not saying that you can't get those in, especially if you use like an impact, but if you use an impact, you will break a nut zert. I promise you will. And I know that some of you guys are like, whatever, Brian, I've done it a million times. Well, if you do it a million times, you probably have broken like 40 or 50,000 nut zerts and you just don't even know it yet. Whatever, Brian. <laughs> Who's that guy anyway? I don't know. He's really- He, he shows up in the videos a lot. He does. Okay, right there. So there we go. So, oh yeah, so much better. It's still kind of hard to get this one. It's not misaligned though. It's just, I think it's just tight. tight. Just tight like a tight. Okay. Goodness gracious. Is it fighting you because of the spring? Mm, no, I think I'm just, I'm just hitting part of the plastic. And so it's acting almost like a nylock. And I, I'm pretty sure it's not cross-threaded. It's just actually genuinely difficult to get started. If I back off this one, I bet it'll go easier. No, it's still kind of hard. 
So anyway, you guys get the idea. We're gonna pause while I tighten these screws. Well, let's show them how to do the other wing setup first, and then we will pause because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. And then just like running all the screws in will not be anything too exciting. So we'll pause for that part, but you can see how I'm doing. I'm just kind of hold it up there in position. And once you get them started, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Let's yeah. let's show them this though. I want to I want them to see that this goes okay. Because if I run into a problem here, I want to share it. What we have to do to get back? Yeah, see see how nice that's going. Yeah. See how nice that goes? Like it's not even a problem. So I'm acting it's it's acting like this one's cross threaded, and I really hope I didn't cross thread it badly. I'd feel really embarrassed if I did that, especially on this one. It's kind of a critical one. Okay, let's try this one again. Okay, so there we go. So we're going in. It's going pretty easy now. No, it's just, it's just get to the certain point and it's like the mm -hmm. threads are a little bit damaged on that nut zert. So I guess that's the way it is. So I'm gonna tighten this backside first, get that thing pressed all the way down so there's almost no torque on the plastic. And then I'm gonna try to finish. Oh yeah, that's going at least. It's just gonna be and tight. it's just, okay, so think about it like this, guys. If you were screwing two pieces of wood together or two pieces of steel together, it'd be no big deal. You could just press all your body weight into it. But when you're dealing with like a foam plane that's on a foam stand with some foam between the foam and it's sitting on top of foam with plastic holding it together, it's like, you know, there's not that much you can press against. And so sometimes when you see me struggle, you're like, Brian, it's like you're putting two screws together. How hard is this? Well, it's not hard to do. It's, it's hard not to overdo. Yeah. And I think it's like you have to strike the balance between having enough power to not destroy it and then, you know, get it together. And this is the only screw we've had trouble with, but it is going. And of course we do it on camera, so. Makes it extra fun. It makes it extra exciting. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four more. We're gonna put it and we'll come right back. All right, so we have all this stuff screwed together. There, this one was really tight and this one was really tight. I don't know why. Doesn't really matter. And then me and the camera crew, while we were off camera, we were talking about how terrible these decals lined up. This one's not such a big deal because you could hide that maybe, but then this one's really bad. Yeah. And I'm like, come on FMS. Why don't you just have them redesign the decal so it's cut between the numbers or something? Yeah. But not, not a huge deal. It's not, those type of details are not a deal breaker for me, but it's still disappointing because you know, it's like, that's never gonna get like that much better. Right. So that being said, not a big deal. You could resolve that if you wanted to take a few minutes with some paint and touch it up. But I just don't, I don't like the idea of having to do that. But there again, this has been a, a pretty easy build. Yeah. And we have LEDs, we have flaps, we have all the things that we always are clamoring to get these you know, companies to put on here, mm -hmm. including pneumatic tires. So we don't want to beat them up when they do all the stuff we ask them to do. Okay. This is not an overly large plane. No, so it's really not. <gasps> oh my goodness. You know what I just realized we didn't do? Yep. We didn't put the spar in the tail. Guys, look. Wing spar here for the main wing. I am yeah. super embarrassed that you I forgot so that. I'm so excited about that little clippy do. I know, I did get excited about the clippy do. So, guys, don't forget the wing spar. Because I was like, that doesn't seem like it should be enough. And I should have acted on that, but I didn't. So we're gonna act on it now. Okay, so let's show you how to take this apart. Press the clippity do, and it just comes out. And then back here, this one needs to be pulled apart. And then what I needed to do was I needed to go like this. Yeah. Okay. So real easy fix, no big deal. Nobody died. I can't believe you forgot to stick it in the hole. I know, that's extremely unusual. I will definitely never do that again. I know. Okay, all right, so we're good there. Now, we gotta finish the wings. This assembly has gone super easy other mm -hmm. than those two screws. Yeah. Uh, but I must say, it is kind of a lot of steps. It's not hard steps, but it is a lot of steps. So if you're new to building planes, I don't wanna discourage you from getting this particular model because the steps are not hard. I want you to understand that when you build another model, you'll realize just how easy this really is. But if you're getting this for the first time and you're like, man, that's a lot of steps. I'm not sure I can handle it. Don't worry, just follow along in the video. Do it the completely stupid way like we do. Mm -hmm. and It'll be no problem at all. Yep. Okay, so you see these three wires? Cam crew, if you could just use one hand to support that. Yep. I'm gonna take these three wires. One is not labeled, that's the aileron. One is labeled the flap and then one is not labeled, that's the LEDs. How do you know that, Brian? Because they're different from each other. This one, of course, only has two pins and then these have three pins. So you have your 
ground, which is brown, then you have your positive, which is red, and then you have your signal, which is orange. This is just power and ground. So plus voltage and minus voltage, or reference, and then plus voltage. Since it's a DC circuit. It's so hot in the neutral. Yeah, <laughs> except it's not AC. I'm sorry, I probably guys, just, I'm having a good I, day. I probably just offended all the guys that talk like that. And hot and neutral, guys. Hot and neutral is different. That's AC. We're not dealing with AC. Alternating current. Okay, I just pulled the. <gasps> Whoa! You could chop your fingers off. Don't do that. Whoa! Hold on. You know what else you can do? You know what else you can chop off? Watch this. <laughs> Booyah. I don't need no downer every time I get my model out. Don't cut your fingers off, people. And if you do cut your fingers off, seriously though, be careful. There's two things to get people hurt in this hobby, generally speaking. And those generalities include both lipos and cut hands. Seriously. Yeah. Be careful with your prop. Don't put the prop on until you're ready. We do it in our videos all the time, and I know some of you guys always give me trouble about that. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a bad example. I'm just trying to get the video done so you guys can see it. The truth is, if you don't know what you're doing, definitely don't install the prop. I'm just sliding this back as I go, and then I'm pulling the wires as I go. Yeah, wait to put your prop on until you're all done setting everything up. You're gonna keep holding that, please. Okay. Thank you. And then these are antennas. I was trying to show the people what that was too, and I kind of got distracted by a million other things. Those are antenna ends from this uh, FlySky receiver. Okay, and then this is a power cord that goes to your battery. And then these are the three wires that go to the flaps and ailerons. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I am going to just use, this is aileron. Why are there three aileron plugs? That is so weird. Oh, you know why? Because that's where we're going to plug our power for our LEDs. LEDs. Yep. Uh huh. So we've got this one, which is going to be aileron. You're like, but Brian, how do you know that's your ailerons? Because it's labeled on the reflex, and you're going to have to probably flip sides if you want to show the people. Brown to brown, red to red, orange to orange, until it snaps. It's not, there it is. Good. Okay. Switch hands real quick. Yeah. Then this is flaps, so flaps are directly off the receiver. Okay, so we're gonna grab this. We're gonna plug this in here. Okay, pull that down. Make sure it snaps. Out. There it is. Okay, pull, double check. Then you can plug in one of these to one of these three. See how it's brown and red and orange? You're gonna put the red in the middle and you're gonna put the black on the ground, see? And then you just don't have a signal, so you don't plug it in, okay? And you're like, but Brian, that one's plugged into flap and the other one's plugged into the ailerons. How is that ever gonna work? Well, it doesn't matter because all you're doing is stealing power. And there's one extra here and there's one extra here. So it should be a pretty straightforward process, okay? And I just picked one here and one there. It's not a big deal, either way you could do it. Now. We do need to get the other wing, so camera crew is gonna hold still. She's just gonna stay in that position. We'll grab the other wing. We obviously have to remember to put our screws in yes. to actually hold the wings in, so we'll do that here in a minute. This one, I didn't have to pull them out, but they are out now. Okay, so if you guys are new to Brian Phillips RC, the way we fund our channel is we sell these things through the links in the video description below. We work with these partnered companies that send us these airplanes to review, which is super exciting, and there's no way we could ever afford to use and keep and maintain so many airplanes. I don't know if you guys can tell, we have probably, I don't know, seven or 8,000 dollars worth of airplanes in this one room alone, maybe more, and probably 15,000 dollars worth of chargers and batteries. And no, we don't pay for all of it, and we have never tried to lead you guys to believe that. We used to when we first mm -hmm. started, and we paid for every bit of it, and it was extremely trying and challenging on a family budget. And so if you guys are buying every plane we review, you are our favorite people, and please come back and watch yes. every one of our videos. But at the same time, we understand that is totally impractical for the average family, and we have never expected that from anybody. But if you wanna help support our channel, the best thing you can do is buy these awesome airplanes from the links in the video description below. And that gives us a pat on the back because then we get small commissions from the companies we work with, and that is how we fund our channel, which also pays for our life, and it's very nice. We have a big family, we have four kids. The four kids are actually in the basement playing right now. And I'm gonna pull this through the rest of the way. 
Why is that other one wanting to pop out? Oh, it's because I'm pushing wing, against yeah, the wing spar. I can spar. push a little harder if you need me to. So guys, if you want to help support Brian Phillips RC and see more of this free content on YouTube, definitely check the links in the video description below and you can buy what you like. We never want you to buy something you don't like, but we want to help you to understand if you're going to like it before you buy it. Because as you know, everything on YouTube or on the internet can be made to look good, even with bit bad advice from influencers just like me. And we never want to mislead. We want to give you guys a real representation of what the product is going to be like when you open up the box so that when you get it at your own house, in your own driveway, in your own doorstep, on Christmas day, whatever it is, we want you to be happy with what you bought and not have buyer's remorse or a crashed piece of foam. So at the end of the day, we're here to serve the RC community and there's others just like us. But if you watch our video and you get some value out of it, smash the like button and definitely subscribe, click the bell for notifications. So we got brown, red and orange, orange is signal. So I want red in the center. So the center meaning of the three pins, this is gonna be the lights for this wing here. It's just one light, it's one nav light. And all this is doing is just stealing power and ground it. Incidentally, real quick. Okay, aileron plugs into the aileron on the reflex. It's just a three-way splitter. Aileron plugs into the aileron on the reflex. Flap plugs into the flap on the flap. Y splitter, it's actually a three-way Y splitter. And then the power for one wing plugs into the flap over here. And then the other flap plugs into the flap over here. And then if you guys look from above, you can kind of see where those wires are passing through. Those wires passing through will just kind of push as we go through. So we should be good to go. Now we're gonna flip this thing over. So if you guys were wondering how we did all this and how we could afford to pay for all these planes and things like that, well, we don't. And we hope you guys didn't get that wrong impression. Oh no, look what I did. I slid this on underneath. Oh. Yep, I, I had enough okay. to get around it. Okay, I was wondering why it was so tangled up. And I didn't, I didn't mention that I should have. This aileron were caught underneath here. See this, guys? There you go. Okay, so that goes down like this. And then these are pinned on. Why don't we actually, do why do don't we on? get, well, before you do that, let's do this. Okay. Because this will snap. They're just like a pressure fit. Now, I got to say, this is one of my least favorite parts of this plane. It's the same on the Husky Ultimate. It's the same on the PA-18 uh, 1.7, which we also reviewed. There are clips like that, and those clips are the first thing that break when you have an accident, and they're really, really hard to fix, mm -hmm. okay? Because this you can fix actually pretty easy, but then these little push clips like this with this penetration style connection point, um, I mean, they are fast and they're easy to use. Wait, you have, oh, sorry, that's not coming out from the window. They're fast and they're easy to use, but they don't fix easy. Right. So I'm not a huge fan of them, okay? And if you would have to take your yeah. wings, then they're kind of... Yeah, they're wonky. Okay. okay, so from the nut and bolt sack, we've got two of these on each wing, so I'll just grab all four. And then these things will slide on, kind of hold the wing in place. I wanna go this way, because the airplane's gonna fly a certain direction, and I know it's not gonna get pushed out, but it just kind of like makes me feel warm and fuzzy if I put them this direction. So like, you know, you're not gonna be flying backward unless you do some weird trick. And that being said, weird tricks, guys. This plane should be able to do all the weird tricks you want. Um, you know, contingent on whatever the airframe can handle because these little PA-18s are super fun flying planes. The 1.7 meter was awesome if you're looking for a great plane. Of course, that was a reflex equipped uh, plug and fly, not a ready to fly. So if you're new to the hobby and you're trying to find something that you can buy that's gonna give you everything you need, this would be a great option. So we'll go ahead and probably include this in our beginner planes if it does well. Ooh, yeah, that was, that's a nice pair of tires. Good splaying motion, definitely. Like, look at this, guys. This, this is one thing I gotta point out. They have washer on washer, bearing surfaces, guys. We have aluminum blocks. This is the type of quality that we're getting now, which is incredible. We used to never get anything like that. Yeah. I mean, just like five or six years ago, we were getting planes that had like bent pieces of music wire and that was as good as you got. And uh, to be honest, these things are coming so much better out of the box. I mean, so much better. And it's really exciting to be part of bringing this all to you in the hobby. And obviously we love it, or at least I love it. My wife, my camera crew, wonderful camera crew. She does not love it. She loves me. <laughs> I love it. And I hope it shows because I really am into this stuff. And we love bringing you guys this stuff. Megan is very good at the camera. And we didn't know that when we started this whole endeavor. Not a clue. We had no idea. 
it just turns out that she had this like weird skill that like nobody understood. It was like God made her to hold the camera. <laughs> and so some of you guys probably don't know the history because you haven't been watching for all, what, eight years? Eight years. Eight and a half years, something like that, eight years. Right. It's been a long time. Whoa. Okay, I need your help. Yep. I want you to stand here, palm of your hand. Okay. Use the whole palm of your hand. I need you to press so I can press. No, don't lift. Press. Just, Just press. press. Hard. Okay. I'm gonna press against you. Okay. Now that's in. Okay, now just keep holding. So it goes in easy. Now keep holding. Okay. Oh man, that is a hard reach. Look at this, guys. Holding on the very end. And it's like everything I can do to reach because I put those landing gear on first. I'm regretting the landing gear first, but then I'm not sure how you would do this. It's, I think it's gonna be hard no matter what you do. Yeah, it's just gonna be kind of an awkward step, I think. Yeah, but anyway, so when we started this, sorry, I get on a tangent. Yeah. When we started this, we started this because I didn't have enough memory on my cell phone. I want you to go forward like this. There you go. See how it's rocking in a position? Yep. And we were doing a Sport Cub SUMX for Horizon. And um, we weren't doing it for Horizon no. at all. We were doing it for, for you. Me. And uh, I need you to press like so I can push hard. Okay. Because otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. Good, 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 good. You wanted me to film what you were doing so that you could go back and watch it and learn okay. from it. Now. Show the people what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have her push back, and I'm gonna actually change so that I'm back here. And you see how that closes that joint? We're making a lever, and that lever, show, now, now you can let go and go back. I wanna show them how my body is. Mm -hmm. I've got this pressed against my chest. It's holding it on the table, I've got that, and then I'm pushing like this. You see how that pushes back? Mm -hmm. That bites this point so that you can get your threads started. Once your threads are started, you can let go right away. So if you're building this on your own and you've got it kind of like pseudo put together, but you're trying to get that last screw, but it's giving you trouble, you can also hold it like this in your belly or in on your leg, and then you can press like this. It's just challenging because you know you gotta have another hand actually run the screwdriver. So as you can see, all the screws are in. Show them our extras. One screw. One screw and one linkage yep. so far. The linkage is gonna go on the elevator and the elevator, of course, is gonna get hooked up after we power everything up. Um, the reason we do that is because we want that servo to get centered and then we can adjust our ball link end so that it is appropriately connected. Um, okay, so everything is in place. Let's just double check our wiring. We've got the two antennas, nothing hooks to those. This is the little receiver. Is there a bind that says BVCC? And then that says aileron. Okay, so channel one, that must be bind and VCC. Okay, so I'm not sure what to do with that if I have to bind it or not. Oh, and then also we have this Velcro here and you're like, well, what's the Velcro there? Why do we have that piece of Velcro? Obviously we have these straps to help hold in the battery. That all makes sense, it's pretty clear. But then we have this piece of Velcro here, just like this. You can peel that out, okay? And so normally what they would like you to do, and let's just, you would normally stick this maybe on the back side of the battery, something like that, and then you could slide that battery in and put it where you want, and then it holds it totally secure. But what we do, and we have oftentimes done, is we will grab, these are bamboo skewers. We use these to help us fix planes, by the way, mm -hmm. and they work super good. In fact, I used about six or seven of those when I fixed the SU. 27, yep. and all I do is I just ran those things into the foam. I have done that on a number of different videos, so if you're new to flying, you will need to fix your planes, and so those are really helpful. Yep. So we're gonna grab some scissors. Picks. Yep, toothpicks. <laughs> okay, so this is shelf liner. It's like what you'd put in your shelf to keep your stuff from sliding around, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of Velcro that was provided with the plane. I'm gonna lay it down on this little area here. I'm just gonna cut around it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but the more perfect it is, the more pretty it's gonna be. And then I just take this, lay it down, undo the backing, of course the backing. This is some pretty high quality stuff, so it's gonna be nice and sticky. And then you can just stick that onto there. And you're like, but why would you do that? That seems so dumb, watch. See how easy this slides, okay? That's not a good example. There's no downward pressure, so it doesn't hold. But if you put any downward pressure, you, I mean, you could like move the counter, okay? So now take this, 
stick that right back on top of the Velcro. And you're like, why wouldn't you just, why wouldn't you just glue down the piece of, of shelf liner? Well, you can do that. If you have like a plug and fly and they don't provide the Velcro, you could do that instead and it would work great. Yeah. So just whatever gets you in there, gets a little bit better retention on your battery is super important because you don't want that battery to be moving around a lot while you're flying. I mean, a little teeny tiny bit of movement, it's not a huge issue, but the idea is you don't want your center of gravity to get shifted, which is probably gonna be one of the next things we talk about. But in order to talk about that, we do have to have the plane fully assembled. We have to have it powered up or not necessarily powered up, but at least batteried up so that we can see where the balance point is. And in order to do that, we have to finish the build. So let's keep going. All right, so right here, we have this battery. I wanna show you guys how to test your voltage if you don't know how to do this. There's two ways. A, you wait till that thing is green, green, and green. But in our case, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Okay, we go back to that flashing thing. This is an XPC battery checker. We use this in our smart batteries, but I can use it on a dumb battery too. So we're at 3.814, good Goodness lord. Gracious. That barely charged at all. Okay, so we probably should have measured what it was doing before. But what I'm gonna do now real quick is I'm actually gonna grab and I'm gonna grab one of these little adapters. These adapters come with certain batteries. And I'm gonna plug that in. That gives us an EC3 from our XT60. And then I'm gonna plug it into one of these better chargers. Now, if you're new to the hobby and you like using the smart technology like these batteries, this will do up to 4S. And it's called the S155. It's a 55 watt charger, but it also does all the smart setup. And it's got an IC3 or an IC5, okay? Now it's unusual on a 4S to have an IC5, but we do have a 4S that has an IC5, and here it is, 5,000. It's got this, okay? Gen 2 will not have a balance lead, so you'll be married to using a smart connection if you wanna do it safely, but you can do it unsafely other ways. Anyway, I'm gonna not tell you about unsafe things here on this channel. You guys can figure that stuff out on your own. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna plug that in. That's gonna show you your voltage of your pack. As you can see, it's now I'm gonna press this play button. I'm gonna to go to voltage, it says 4.2, that's what I want. And 2.2 just happens to be where it's set, but this is a 2.2 amp hour battery, also known as 2,200 milli, meaning one thousandth, okay? So 2.2, so you divide this number, 2,200 divided by 1,000 gives you 2.2 amps hours, amp hours, instead of milli amp hours. That speaks to the capacity of each of these three cells that are in series one to two, two to three. This is what comes off of the first one. This is what comes off of the last one. This is parallel with this, and this is parallel with that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is untwist that so we don't have that yank out, and I go down to start. I'm gonna highlight start, and then it starts charging. Now, you may notice that we have other chargers here but the idea is like, if you wanted to get into something more robust, you can do six bad, uh, six S batteries on. This would be a six S battery. So there's six cells in series. This is a pretty robust battery, 50 C. This one is a 25 C, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 25 C, so pretty low C rating. This one's a pretty high C rating. And you can see it's got a bigger charge cable on it. And there's also no balance lead. This is a data line, okay? So we talk about that here on the channel. We'll help you guys understand what you need. As you get into this hobby, you're gonna advance through the ranks. Eventually, you're gonna go to bigger batteries. The bigger batteries are gonna provide for more power, more punch, more pop, and you're gonna have faster planes or maybe more engines or more motors or more props or bigger props or bigger motors. And that's where you go up to the bigger size batteries. But in aircraft, it's different than in air, uh, you know, like on cars, because in cars, pretty much more power means way faster um, or more powerful, but not necessarily on an airplane. You can have a bigger battery in a much larger plane that's very slow. It just has to do with the amount of power needed to actually turn the prop, to provide the torque, to move the air and all that good stuff. So it's a little bit more sophisticated on the airplanes, just so you guys know. So if you're not aware of how to size these things and how exactly to get from where you are now, which is maybe not knowing anything about it or knowing a little bit from back in the 80s or the 90s or the 70s or whatever it was, that's exactly what we do on this channel. I'm Brian Phillips RCs. We're gonna take you from where you are to where you wanna be, which is flying RC airplanes without help of YouTube. And so we're gonna help get you off of your fix of Brian Phillips RC so that you can get out and get flying. So that's what we're gonna continue doing here. So obviously we have that thing charging now. It's charging at 2.2 amps. 
This charger is probably gonna charge pretty slow, okay? This thing only charges at 1,000 milliamps. It's charging current is 1,000 milliamp hours, so it's only gonna charge at one amp hour. This one I can charge as fast as I want. You could probably safely charge this at 2C or 2.5C because it's a 25C pack. I'm not saying that that's the greatest idea because you're gonna wear out your batteries faster. The chemistry is gonna be upset the faster you charge and the faster you discharge. So if you can keep your discharge, meaning the way you fly, as tame as possible, your battery will last longer. And if you charge it back up as slow as possible, it will also last longer. But there are limits to that. If you're charging at half an amp, it's just gonna take forever and it's not gonna matter. But if you charge it like, seven amps, you could probably safely do that when they're brand new, but I wouldn't recommend it, you know, cause you're gonna just basically make that chemistry work really, 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 really fast. And it's gonna heat up and it's gonna bulge because it has less time to deal with the gases and the chemistry and all the chemical reactions that are happening in that lithium polymer pack. So anyway, back to the plane. All right, that's what we're gonna teach you here on Brian Phillips RC. All sorts of useless information to everybody else that you know. This thing is not spatially aware. That thing is spatially aware. It knows where it is in time and space relative to the position of the plane. It's making decisions. This is not, this is just receiving radio signal, okay? So now that we've established it, everything is plugged in tight. I don't know if we need to bind. If we need to bind, we'll have to dig that back out. So I'm just gonna tuck that back into the plane and just more or less get it out of the way, okay? We already have all our wires connected and I'm gonna just push this back and you can see where I laid that thing might not be the best possible place, but we're gonna go with it for now. If it turns into being a problem, then we'll change it. So the next thing we need to do is probably go ahead and get the prop adapter and the prop on. This is one of those steps where you're gonna to wanna to wait until later because we're gonna answer some of the questions that we need to answer to get the build done, but you guys don't necessarily have to do this at this stage of the game. But the first thing I wanna do is, because there's no throttle cut on this that I know of, you have to be exceptionally careful. So we're gonna do that, okay? So this is a transmitter. The transmitter needs some batteries, four double A's. We're gonna provide those ourselves because it doesn't come in the package. I didn't see them. If they do, we weren't aware of it and we missed them, okay? Negative, negative is a flat. It's listed right here, negative and positive. I'm assuming if you're doing this sort of thing, you know how to put batteries in a transmitter. If you don't, we don't want you to hear that wrong, but we do want you to understand that here on Brian Phillips RC and any RC channel, you're gonna to tend to hear a lot of vernacular and terminology that might not make sense to you. And we're gonna to try to help you by answering questions in the comments down below. We do that, we have done that for years and we try our very best, but we have been having a hard time keeping up. So just do your best, ask the questions, we'll do our best to get to you. Okay, so this can be turned on. You see there's a little light that comes on. That's high power, mid power and low power, hon. Oh. So as the LEDs, as the LED color changes, that means that your battery voltage is getting lower in your transmitter. Okay, so this is throttle, this is rudder, this is elevator, so that would push the nose down, this would pull the nose up. This is roll left, roll right, this is yaw left, yaw right, okay? And then I don't know, these are probably gonna control the mode, okay? I don't know which one's which, these are trimmers, okay? Trim up, trim down, trim up, trim down, trim left, trim right, okay, pretty simple stuff. And then this is the bind button, okay? We aren't gonna necessarily have to do that that I know of because this is probably already bound for us. Now let's talk about putting this together. This is the base of our spinner. This spinner is gonna go onto the prop shaft. This is gonna then go onto there. And they just stack, okay? We're gonna be left with some sort of screws, I assume, but I guess I don't really know. See that? That's so weird. How does this even work? Oh, it's you have to screw it onto the prop shaft. Prop shaft, oh. Okay, so coming around. You can see that this has that octagonal. This is called a prop adapter here. And that comes right off of the brushless motor. Brushless motors don't have brushes. I know that sounds pretty obvious, but if you're new to the hobby, brushless motors are a little bit more powerful, a little bit faster, and they last a lot longer because a brush is a component that contacts, that contacts one set of magnets. And then as that's excited and then moves out of the way, it contacts another set of magnets and then it gets out of the way and so on and so forth. But you actually have a commutator that touches and that will actually stroke along it like a brush. Brushless motors don't do that. They use magnetic coils and then they energize and de-energize in sequence. And there's no touching parts except for the bearings on the shaft so it can spin, okay? 
So you have a much more efficient energy transfer and that is all handled by the electronic speed control, which is inside of here somewhere. I, you can't really see it on this plane, but that's what goes to this wire is the electronic speed control. That also has what's called a BEC, a battery eliminator circuit. The battery eliminator circuit actually runs the servos, the LEDs, the everything else's. Okay, so you see how I did that? I just tightened it on there. Now that's obviously not all the way tight, right? But it will be when I'm done. That was pretty easy, that but the thing is, good. I, I kind of wish I could torque this down better because like, I don't really feel like that's very tight at all. I mean, it's, it's definitely tight, but like, how the heck am I supposed to get in there? Well, is there another trick? Cause normally correct. you would have like a screw point. You would go like this and you could really tighten it down. But I mean, it's, it's on there. I don't know what to say. I guess okay. it's there. Um, okay, so that being said, this is the point where you need to be careful because there is no throttle cut. Now, normally when I run, on one of our spectrum transmitters, I set up this switch to operate as a throttle cut. Now, what does that do? That means that if I move my throttle stick, it's kind of wrapped up right now, then I'm not gonna cut myself up because if that stick were up, you also notice it's just kind of worn in a little bit so it drops down a little bit on its own from gravity. Well, what's gonna happen is if I were to bump this when it's on my lanyard hanging around my chest and I bump it, then I don't cut my hand off, okay? It's a very important critical safety issue that you should get used to doing as soon as you have equipment that's capable of doing a throttle cut. And I honestly think that it's one of the few things that these ready to fly air, airplanes do not have that they really should, and that is a throttle cut. It wouldn't be that complicated to add a throttle cut even if it's a mechanical disconnect in there. But it would be a big safety feature, and I like that safety feature. And yes, as with everything else in the hobby, there's lots of people that have lots of different opinions about lots of different ways to stay safe we're not gonna be your big brother here. We're not gonna be nanny. You guys are adults, or maybe you're not. And if you're not an adult, make sure you're working with an adult so that you can try to stay as safe as possible. Because really, at the end of the day, once you get this thing in the air, it's your responsibility to control it. It's your responsibility to get it back to the ground. And it's your responsibility not to hit anybody or anything. And so it's very important that you develop the skills in the right order so that you don't end up crashing into somebody and hurting them, okay? It's not impossible that you could hurt somebody while doing this, but it is also very rare that people actually get hurt in the hobby other than, and I'm talking about chopping to the bone, going to the hospital, getting stitches, potentially bleeding out, people have died, but it is extremely rare. And I'm talking about like kids die in football practice. It's terrible, but it happens, you know? So let's get back to reality here. Be careful. This is the step where you're gonna be extra, extra careful, okay? Throttle cut doesn't exist on here. So the safest thing to do is to leave the prop off. You don't really need this reflex manual, but if you need it, it's here. They talk about how this works. What is the reflex? The reflex is a stabilizer that helps to make your plane fly easier. And I'll explain how that works. This is a manual for the actual FlySky radio. I'm gonna shut that off so we don't waste battery, okay? Very basic. Simple transmitter, not programmable, but you can flip some of your switches. I'm not gonna bemoan the issue. I'm just gonna show you that it works. And at the end of the day, the stabilizer receives signal that says elevator up, elevator down, or aileron left or right, rudder left or right, or throttle up and down, and then there's a couple auxiliaries, okay? So they're the same as these, they just happen to have a detent that hold them in a certain position, okay? So it's cheaper for the manufacturers to produce that. So what that does is when the receiver gets a signal, it's just going to tell via pulse width modulation, that servo or pair of servos, in this case, the ailerons are tied together on one channel. I want you to move 25% out. Okay, 25%. Okay, now 36%, now 100%. Now 0%, now minus 100%, you know, and so on and so forth. So it just replicates what you give here. Well, what happens is in between you and the control surfaces is a stabilizer. So what does the stabilizer do? So the stabilizer says, okay, I'm flying along, I'm happy, PA 18, and the wind goes whoosh, whoosh. Scared the cat, it was hilarious. <laughs> so what does the stabilizer do? The stabilizer says, no suit for you but I didn't have to tell it as a pilot. And then mother nature, as mother nature blows the wing down, the ailerons are going to respond by going against it. And it's going to want to raise that wing back up. Now also same thing. If it's like this, it gets yawed. Then if the wind blows here, 
like that, then the rudder is going to go like this and it's going to resist that movement. And that's what a stabilizer does is it helps to resist the environmental impact of both pitch, roll, and yaw. Now, there's an added component of auto leveling that can be turned on if you'd like. That is on top of the stabilization and it will automatically level the aircraft when you let go of the sticks. Because most people that are new to the hobby, they go around flying and I'll just use this little, this little Spitfire as an example. Okay, so you're flying along, you let go of the sticks, what do you think is gonna happen? It's just gonna keep going straight like this, no. With <laughs> auto leveling, yes. But normally it's gonna veer off slowly, it's just gonna kinda do this and go bang like that. And it's gonna blow up in a million pieces and you're gonna say, uh, what just happened? Or it's gonna go like, you're gonna be flying along and it's gonna go like, Whoa! just like that. And that's exactly what's gonna happen, okay? And you're like, but Brian, that's not what I imagined would happen. Doesn't matter what you imagine, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Or it's gonna veer over and then fly at your face. You're gonna have to jump out of the way and look like a fool. Trust me, it's happened. So, that being said, if you turn on auto leveling and the stabilizer, or you turn it off, there's three different modes. Boom, boom, boom. Now, normally the order goes something like this. Auto leveling, nothing, and then just stabilization. The auto leveling also has stabilization, okay? So there's an offsetting if you have three positions. One, two, three. Okay? I don't know which one's gonna do it, but one of these two is gonna do it. They might also command and control the same channel. Okay, hopefully that was a good explanation. It's much easier to see it with your own eyes. And so, I'm just gonna tell you, when I got into the hobby and I had a Sport Cub SUMX, which is just like this except small. This is a BF-109, so just imagine this was a Sport Cub S. I took this plane and I threw it and it went, that flew pretty dang good. Okay, so that went, it went straight as an arrow. I'm talking straight as an arrow, like three yards away. And I said, mind blown. And this was out in the wind and everything. I said, I could do this. And you can too. And so that's why having the Reflex V2 is gonna help, it's gonna help you to go from having absolutely no clue and being scared to death. And believe me, the first time you get in the air, you're like, whatever, Brian, it's, I'm a full scale pilot. I can do that. I've been flying airliners for 30 years. Yeah, right. Okay, show me your first flight on video. I want to see it. Um, the reality is it's much different. And if you fly full scale, congratulations. That's a, a very cool skill, and I don't want to bemoan that that is anything other than that. But flying radio controlled is totally different skill. Even though you know what a wing is, and you know what ailerons are, and you know what flaps are, and you know what elevators and rudders and uh, vortex generators and LEDs and all this stuff and squishy tires and you know, tundra tires and all these different technologies that you understand. It does not translate to muscle memory. I don't care how smart you are. It's not a smart thing. It's a muscle memory thing. And so that being said, when you get this plane, you're ready to fly it, get a simulator. You can do this and that, and you will learn to fly and it will happen quick. So super exciting. Okay. All right. Continuing on. So this is where we're going to be super careful because I'm not sure if this thing's going to want to start on us. So this thing is at 75%. Let's show them where we are. You can see this little charger now. This one doesn't come with it, obviously. This is just for example. I'm gonna press the down arrow. You can see what our voltages are, okay? So you see how it's keeping them all about the same. That's called balanced charging, okay? All right, so let's zoom out. I'm actually go ahead and stop this battery charging by just unplugging it. We're gonna take that battery off the charger. Now at this point, I'm gonna install the battery into the airplane where I think it needs to go, and it's probably gonna be no big deal, but we'll take a look at CG next. Okay. So the first thing's first, this thing's only gonna fit in one certain position. Now this is a 3S 2200. I need a little bit more room on this back strap. I don't wanna have to undo this strap every time, so I'm just gonna back it off a little bit. This one's gonna be hard to get to because this is a narrow body on this aircraft. The PA-18 and the 1.7 meters quite a little bit bigger. It's probably about double the size on this plane. You're like, but Brian, 1.7 is not double the size of 1.3. That's true, but you have to remember the size classes are, um, I don't wanna say they're exponential, but it's, it's bigger in every dimension. It's not just bigger on the wingspan, guys. Okay, so we're gonna try to slide this in. Boy, that, is, that shelf liner is hanging on really good today. And I'm up against the reflex. So as you can see, I'm up against the reflex, meaning that little orange box there, that's the stabilizer. It is spatially aware. The receiver's back here, just kind of tucked in loose. And what I want to do is I want to take probably my forceps so I can grab that. If you don't have forceps, you can use needle nose pliers, but forceps are super nice because the tip is so small. 
I'm just going to pull this up. Just going to feed this through. And this is all you do. Super easy process. There's plenty of room in there. It's not super hard to do. Some planes are very, very challenging to get the batteries in and it will just about ruin the plane for you because you can't get the battery in. It's no fun. Okay. Now you'll note that that battery's in there. It's got a little teeny bit of retention, but watch this. It's not moving. The wires are moving everywhere. The receiver's moving everywhere, but the battery is not because you don't need that much retention with that shelf liner. That's why we do that. Plus that shelf liner stuff, it costs like four bucks. You know, you get a whole roll of it like this for 12. You'll use it for a hundred years. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think, what did we take one out of one of our drawers? Yeah, you've been using it for mm -hmm. ever. Okay, so stick is down. I'm paying attention to where this is because I don't want to cut my arm. So I'm going to secure the plane in a safe way. I don't want to touch this. I don't want to touch where the prop's going to be. I just want to see how it initiates to make sure that it's going to be safe. So the safest thing you could do is take this off, but I want to check CG first. So I'm not going to plug this in, but I'm going to simulate where the plug would be if it were plugged in. Then we're going to talk about CG because that is an important step. And I would normally do this after we have it all assembled because you need to know how it's going to weigh and how it's going to balance. That's what center of gravity testing is for. Okay, so I'm going to slide this little balance lead down so it's out of the way. And we're just going to snap this little lid on. Oh yeah. Now, center of gravity is usually something you have to mark, but we also have to get this linkage on. Okay, so at some point that's going to be on there. So I think for now we will be good enough on this plane to just basically snap this into the hole or slide this into the linkage. That's going to at least get the weight on the aircraft, okay? And you're like, well, how'd you know to go to the outside hole? Well, if you look at this drawing, this drawing will show you what hole to stick it in if you just follow through the instructions. Right here, flaps, ailerons, goes to the outside hole, okay? So as you can see, it's in the outside hole. Now it's not hooked up yet, but we're gonna have to adjust this by turning it in or turning it out so that that thing is straight when there's no input applied, okay? All right, so now that we have all that done, we can check the CG. If you'll note that there's two bumps here, do you see the bumps? This is, center of gravity is 60 to 70 millimeters back from the leading edge. Now, any bets on what this little bump is? <laughs> I'm gonna go with center of gravity. Somewhere between 60 and 70. I'm gonna think it's probably 60 to 70 exactly. And also we have one spare screw guys, if you were paying attention, just one mm -hmm. spare, okay? So calipers, we'll just break this out and go right to 60. And from the leading edge, that's uh, just a little bit past 60. And then here's 71, yep. So that's gonna be your center of gravity mark. And you'll note that it was off by a couple of millimeters, but who cares? It's really close enough for what we're doing. So let's say it's located at 62 to 70, whatever. That's close enough. So what do those dots mean? That's where you're going to balance this thing to see if the plane is balanced. Okay. That's the center of gravity. Okay. So now why does the center of gravity matter? Because if your center of gravity, if it's tail heavy, it's going to lean like this and it's gonna to wanna to slip off your fingers and that's gonna make it extremely hard to fly. And if it's too nose heavy, it's gonna be like this and it's gonna fall off your fingers and it's gonna be way too understable. You won't have enough elevator to actually fly it. But err on the side of nose heavy versus tail heavy as a new pilot, you'll find that it's better that way. But if you're too nose heavy, your elevator will not be as strong because it can only resist the elevator only changes the way your plane is pointed, okay? All it's doing is it's pivoting the plane on the center of gravity. So if you move the center of gravity too far back, your elevator is gonna be ultra sensitive and you're gonna give it just a little teeny bit, it's just gonna make the thing go out of control, okay? If you go way too far forward and it's nose heavy, then what's gonna happen is you won't have enough elevator to roll off the ground. Or worse yet, you're gonna be full up elevator and you're still gonna be going down and you're gonna crash, okay? So just make it so that it balances when you take your middle finger or your you know, tool, you set up you know, two long sticks on a board or something, you can lay the plane on that if you wanna do that. I don't do that, it's a waste of time. Just use your fingers. That's good enough, we're good. And what do you know about where the battery is? The battery is how you're gonna make the adjustment for your center of gravity. So you see how I have mine? See where it is? 
pretty simple stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a little bit of room. You could pull that forward if you'd like. I'm gonna just leave it where it is. Now also, one other trick that I do when I set up a new plane is I take a marker. And I know where this is gonna go. So I can write down 2200, 2200 milliamp hour, 3S, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I would normally mark where the front and the back of that battery goes, but to be frank, I don't think it's gonna really matter because it's pretty much where it goes. There's only pretty much one position. Now, you can slide it forward a little bit, but I would say just get it so that it's right on the edge of this bulkhead here. The bulkhead meaning this spot here, okay? So that the edge of the battery is right in the, the base of my finger here, okay? So just slightly forward of where I put it. Okay, so now this is the point where we're gonna actually be dangerous and we're gonna have the stick down and we're just gonna go ahead and do this in a safe way. I'm gonna make sure that my body is out of the way by simulating the spin of the prop. I'm gonna make sure that I have it braced. If this thing started and I couldn't control it, I'd just hold it until the battery died. That would take a long time. <laughs> it would be very stressful. I would get help, okay? But it's not gonna do that because I've done enough planes. I understand how they work. And if you don't, you see this? My hand is stopping the plane. If it were to start going, it's gonna to wanna to pull forward. Okay, so I'm gonna just plug it in. Waiting for the beeps, making sure my body's out of the way. I can reposition. You'll notice nothing's happening. That's because I never turned my transmitter on. That was a mistake. I meant to have that on. Transmitter's on. Nothing's happening. I may, oh, nope, it's already bound, okay? So you see how everything is kind of moving like Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the throttle by controlling the plane and then using my ellipse Okay, throttle's down and it's off. I'm confident now I can manipulate the plane without problems. As you can see, we have our nav lights, very bright, very beautiful, front facing, and we have our green nav light. And you're like, well, how do you know what's what? Well, right, red is right returning, RRR, okay? And so that's usually what I've used over the course of the years to help me remember. I generally don't really remember, I just look <laughs> and see. Okay, perfect. And that's also true for boats, okay? So you see we have that linkage on the back is doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test something. I'm gonna flip this on its back and look at the ailerons. You'll note that nothing happened. That means we're not in a stabilizer or auto leveling mode. And so now that tells me that I can get my plane stand out and I can go ahead and hook up my linkage for the elevator, which is the last mechanical step. Short of maybe small CG adjustments, I'm gonna just lay this in such a way that if the prop were to start, if I would bump it, it wouldn't cause some catastrophic dangerous condition, okay? Now I'm gonna flip that over, I'm gonna press, and as you can see, I don't even need to adjust it. Look how perfect that is. Nice. That's sweet. Now, let's suppose that this was like, when this was lined up, it was like this, okay? Then I would need to, you know, I would need to screw that in some so that I could pull it back some, okay? But in my case, I don't even need to adjust it, so I'm literally just gonna snap this on here, and if you don't have enough strength to do that, use some needle nose pliers to get it on there. Or you can use the correct tool, but it's just an unusual thing. If you're new to the hobby, you probably won't have anything like this. This is a ball link plier. Okay, I don't like using these except to take them off because then you get in there in private. You can see this pair is very thick here. So I have a real hard time getting under some of these to actually get that pride off because that would normally go under and you have to have that under far enough that that thing lines up on the screw. See how that's supposed to go? You gotta slide that under and it's too thick. I need to take and grind that down actually. Cause then I'd be able to get into these small ones. Kind of designed for a bigger application. Okay guys, so now that the elevator is working, we can actually take the plane stand. This plane stand costs about 20 bucks. We have links to stuff like that if you need it, but you can also just use a blanket or a couple of towels or you know, like in, um, you know, throw pillows or something like that. Okay, so elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, so this is the next thing you have to do. Line up with the plane, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, y'all left, that's wrong, that's backward. So we have to find a rudder right there, and we're gonna flip it, okay? There you go, there you go, roll left, that means this wing's gonna go down, that wing's gonna come up, okay? 
That means the nose is gonna go up and the nose is gonna go down. That's what we want. Y'all left, y'all right. You see how I move the control? It's a good way to get in a habit of practicing what you expect to see, okay? Now, how do you know what to expect? If you have a video like this, just do what I tell you. Or you can look in the manual, it'll tell you that stuff, okay? Now, the other thing is we have to figure out where the flaps are. The flaps are on one of these switches and the mode's on one of these switches, okay? So I'm gonna hold the plane just in case something weird would happen. Okay, so that changed the mode. So that's the mode and that's the flaps, okay? So this is flaps and this is mode. Now, how do I know the difference between flaps and mode? Well, you just test on the transmitter. And then in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually mark it on the transmitter. Now, also one of the things that you get when you get a more sophisticated programmable transmitter, like what we use on the NX8, is that you would be able to mix an elevator correction. Because what happens when you put those flaps down, this plane is gonna wanna balloon on you. It's gonna wanna go up, almost like you've applied elevator, but you haven't. And so generally we apply flaps and we have a small percentage of elevator compensation so it keeps flying straight. Also that slows your plane down and it allows you to create more drag and changes the shape of the wing so that it can provide more lift at a slower speed or the same lift at a slower speed so that you can actually fly slower. Also, you can point the nose of the plane down. So in real life, when they deploy flaps, that helps so that the pilots can fly down and they can get to the ground. Because when you're flying, you're looking out like this. Also, there's usually a nose on the plane, so you can't see over the nose very good. So when you put those flaps on, you can pitch down without picking up speed or actually even slow down. So you create extra drag and you change the pitch moment of the plane. Because you can see as those flaps go down, that's pretty far, then you can actually go downward, creating more drag, and you can bring it to the ground, which is pretty cool. That would be called like a landing flap setting. This would be like a takeoff flap setting, but really this is normally about where I would put my landing flaps and then I'd have about half of that for this, okay? So this is gonna be flaps, flap, and then this is mode. So I gotta be super careful about this, mode, okay? Now, which one's which? Let's figure out modes now. Okay, I have to be mindful that my prop is installed. I know guys, that's dangerous to do. So the modes, that's definitely stabilizer. How do I know? Because as I move it, I can see the controls. Like when I pull this tail over to that side, watch it, it's gonna go with me. Yep, there it goes. And when I go that way, it's gonna go that way. Yep, let's see, if I'll show them, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna go that way. You see how it's pointing the direction I'm moving it? That's what the stabilizer's doing, see? Now watch the elevator, up and then down. Now watch the ailerons. As I roll, it goes up, as I roll down, it goes down, okay? Now, what it's not doing is with auto leveling, it's gonna find the quickest route to level and then it's gonna go flat, see? Now watch the elevator. The quickest route to level, you see how it's full up elevator, it's trying to pull out of the dive. And then when it gets level, it's gonna stop. Now, what if you're this way? It's gonna point your nose level. What if you're both? It's gonna do both until it brings you to a level attitude. Pretty cool, right? And then in the middle setting, nothing. See, nothing. And you can hear, I'll hold the wheels. Nothing, okay? Now I'm gonna show you with stabilizer, okay? So it's resisting environmental impact that has not been impacted by the pilot. Very cool. All right, guys, that's literally ready to fly. So if you guys are ready to follow along and do this for your very, for your very own PA-18 in a 1.3 meter, which by the way, I didn't show you the size, but this is a 1.3 meter. I'm six foot one, six foot two if I'm buying life insurance. There you go. So that goes up about chest high on me. And then the tail will be a little bit shorter than that. That's pretty standard on airplanes, especially tail draggers. So it's about waist high, okay? Mm -hmm. So you about like a three-fifths ratio, something like that. And yes, these are Tundra tires. So they'll be real good for off-road configuration. And you may actually wanna run the PSI down a little bit. That's pretty firm still. And the lower the PSI, the more amazing it's gonna look. And it's also gonna help 
when you hit hard, but just keep in mind your tail wheel is still hard. And so you're not gonna get much protection on the tail because you've only got a limited amount of this music wire as a spring and that will tend to just really smack down hard. So just be mindful of that. There's lots of reinforcements built into this foam. So when you guys, when you guys are getting your first foam and you're gonna think, well, it's just foam. You know, it's foam, there's like a motor in there. So obviously there's something adapting that to the foam. Well, really it's a lot of carbon fiber. It's a lot of plastic and it's a lot of foam. The vast majority is foam, but then there's lots of plastic and reinforcement in there, okay? So yeah, this is gonna be something else. I can't wait to fly it for you here. As you may already be aware, it's very windy today, so we're probably not gonna fly it right this second. I could fly it in the wind, but the camera crew is gonna get mad if I try to do that right now. So what we're gonna do is we will have two separate videos. This of course is the Unbox Build and Radio Setup. We do that for almost every plane we've done over the course of the eight years we've been doing this. Short of maybe the first year or so, year and a half, we didn't do that for every plane. But if you see a plane in this room, we have done it. And if you see it over here, we have done it. We, helicopters, planes, quads, VTOLs, vertical takeoff for landing. We've done all sorts of cars, we've done trucks, we've done weed whackers, we've done trimmers, we've done tree, tree pruning tools, leaf we've blowers, tractors. So all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, what we pri primarily do here on Brian Phillips RC is fixed wing RC is totally our mainstay. And that's what we really love. And also PPG, I forgot PPG, yeah. sorry. So at the end of the day, if you guys are into it, come back for more, click the bell for notifications. We're doing new planes, usually at least a couple a week. And so we definitely want you guys to be here and be part of it. And if you're brand new to the hobby and you're just saying, hey, I just need somebody to get me over the hump. I need to get out of the chair. I've been watching TV. I wanna get out and fly this thing. I mean, watching YouTube is fun but it's not as fun as flying. And so really at the end of the day, we're here to help get you from where you wanna be, where you are, to where you wanna be, and where you wanna be is flying. So definitely check this thing out. If you buy this stuff from the links in the video description below, you'll be helping to support our family, helping to support Brian Phillips RC as a small business, and that is how we fund everything on this channel. So definitely buy the planes from the links if you have interest in this plane. If you hate this plane and you're like, you know, I just don't, it's not my style, Brian. I want something a little different. We have tons of different choices. So just check down below or better yet, go over to brianphillipsrc.com, which is our website. And it's gonna point you back to the videos you might wanna see because with over 15, 16, 1700 videos, you're not gonna know what we've done unless you are us and we can't hardly keep it straight. Yeah. So definitely check out brianphillipsrc.com and it will help direct you back here. And then when you're ready to make a purchase decision on whatever it is you love, just follow our links. You'll help support us. We're also gonna link to batteries and receivers when we use them. In this case, this is a ready to fly, so we'll link to this. And you could choose, maybe, you, hey, you've got an NX6, you got an NX8, you don't need to buy the ready to fly, just buy the, the plug and fly and then just follow along with one of our other builds. You could follow along the uh, PA, 18 in the 1.7 meter, yep. we, we put in a receiver on that mm -hmm. one. Or maybe, hey, I don't like using the Reflex too, I'd rather use a safe equipped receiver like an AR631. We'll help you with that too. Just find a plane that's similar that we've put one in and you can follow along there. In fact, a lot of the planes that we're doing direct for FMS now, we've done also previously for Horizon. And so we did those with AR631s or AR637Ts as opposed to setting them up with an AR6 20 or a ready to fly like we did in this one. And so you can actually go back to the older video and see exactly how we set it up. So keep in mind also there's some firmware updates that came out on the NX8s. Actually the whole NX line, there was kind of a fiasco. I think we're on like the third one they released and 3.08 seems to have fixed some of the, there was like a weird bug with like a warning screen that would come up. We didn't get hit hard with it, but some pilots did. Uh, fortunately, everybody kept control of their planes. It's just an annoying screen and they'd have to land and then clear that. Yeah. So. But anyway, guys, this thing is super cool. Can't wait to fly it for you. We loved our experience with the 1.7 meter and it has all the features you want. So you might as well get it if you're into it. Also, you know what it doesn't have? It doesn't have geofencing, which is a stupid feature for a beginner that you probably think you need. You don't need it. You don't want it. It's overly complicated. You don't need it. And yes, get, get this. FMS offers that and I don't think you should get it and they offer it in their Ranger and you don't need it We have reviewed the plane that has it and I don't think you should get that particular option 
because I think it's overdone. Also, you know what else? The Carbon Cub in the 1.3 also has that option feature that you can purchase and it's more money and you don't need it. It's just gonna confuse you and scare the crap out of you the first time you have it set up wrong and you hit the geofence and it takes over control and crashes into something. But you know what you do need if you're a beginner? Auto leveling, stabilization, and you will be good. I promise you, I know from experience, I'm gonna help guide you guys through if you decide to take it up. So please do. And then also definitely come back for more because Brian Phillips RC and with the help of my wonderful wife of many years and the camera crew, we will be bringing you so much more through the holiday season and into the winter. Yes, that's right. We'll film in the minus 30 degrees just because we love you so much. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC right around the corner.